Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad. I'm Austin. What's up everybody, I'm Pat. And today we're gonna to be talking about five American MLS players who are destined for a move to Europe in 2021. Now, Pat, when we compiled this list, there were a lot of names we went through, uh, but these five really stood out over the others. It was tough to narrow down, Austin. We have a lot of players, you know, making, you know, leeway in MLS, just performing really well at a young age and, and poised for potential big moves to Europe. So we were able to, uh, you know, finally narrow it down and we feel good about the list. Yeah, and I think it's really a testament to how far MLS has come. You know, just five years ago, we wouldn't have seen some of the big teams that are swooping in for players, such as, you know, Bayern Munich when they came for Alfonso Davies, or, uh, you know, you even got players now getting linked to Juventus, which is a huge club in Italy. So, yeah, I think it's it's really crazy to look at how far we've come. And, uh, yeah, like you said, today will be a fun fun little episode. And, uh yeah, I guess we should we should get right into it, Pat. So we should definitely start off with the player that's on everybody's minds right now and is kind of the man of the hour, and that would be Brian Reynolds. So Brian Reynolds is currently a right back at FC Dallas, uh, 19 years old. And, you know, Pat, he's really a player that started off as an attacker growing up and was, you know, a high-level prospect, uh, played at the U-17 World Cup in 2017 for the U.S., and was really just a crown jewel uh, for that, you know, FC Dallas Academy, but unfortunately, you know, it didn't work out for him as an attacker. They moved him to right back. You know, he spent some time with their USL team there, uh, North Texas SC, their USL one team. And, uh, this year he finally made the move up to their first team at FC Dallas took over for Reggie Cannon, uh, when he was sold this summer to Boa Vista, you know, we've, we've covered that on our, on our weekly episode. Right. And uh, yeah, he really slotted into that spot that that was voided by uh, Reggie Cannon and made it his own. And by the end of the season, you know, he racked up, I believe, a little over uh, 1,200 minutes and really just looked the part of a solid attacking right back. And and that's really kind of the skill set he brings to that position. You know, he really likes to get forward. He's got great size because he's 6'3", um, you know, good speed to match it as well. And he, he's just a player that always looks to get forward. He looks to, you know, take players on and also just, uh, you know, get into that, that final third of the pitch. And, and then when he's in that pitch, you know, cross balls into the box uh, with some velocity. Um, so I, I really like him as a prospect. Um, you know, the one thing he does have to work on, Pat, and, you know, it's, it's, it's tough making that move as an attacker uh, kind of later on in your career or, uh, you know, right before you become a professional, but that would be his defending. So, you know, uh, he's only spent a year, year and a half in the position. So obviously that'll come. Um, but, you know, he has shown at times, and, and especially this season in MLS, you saw him uh, be tenacious, defending, sticking a foot in, you know, winning uh, even some interceptions at times, um, and, and has really shown that he has the potential to be a lockdown defender, um, but he just needs to hone those skills a little bit more. So uh, with that being said, Pat, you know, we should – talk about the the main part of this episode while we're doing this and that's you know where he should move in Europe uh, in 2021 so right now there's several teams linked with him you know you have the big one like Juventus uh, you also have Roma uh, in Italy and you also have Club Bruges from Belgium those were were three main clubs that supposedly uh, you know put in offers for him uh, but right now it really looks like it's down to uh, Juve or Roma uh, the, the one caveat with Juve is if he goes there, they do not have a non-EU roster spot for him. So if he went there this January, he'd have to go on loan for, for half a season and wait till the summer to, to join up with them. You know, the, the, the teams that he's been rumored with to go on loan to are Cagliari and Sampdoria. Both those teams have uh, several options at right back who have kind of you know, jumped in and out of the lineup. Uh, so it does look like the door is open for him if he did go on loan to one of those two teams. Uh, but I think Pat, you know, he really is kind of in a, in a great position right now. You know, when you have Roma and Juve vying for your services, I, I think there could be, you know, worse options from, uh, from his standpoint. Yeah, you know, certainly, uh, you know, could be worse options. I think it's great for Reynolds, Austin. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned the non-EU, uh, you know, part with, uh, you know, Juventus there. And it's kind of interesting because maybe it's a blessing in disguise where, and maybe it's just my opinion here, but I think Reynolds, again, made that great jump with Dallas, is doing really, really well, um, getting the looks in Europe. But, you know, going over to a club with Juventus and they're not doing so well, 
um, you know, in Syria, you know, as, as they're accustomed to, I think would be kind of thrown into the, the deep end pretty quick. And maybe, you know, going, you know, on loan to a, a Cagliari or a Sampdoria, again, my, my preference is still Roma, I think. But I think that'd be pretty beneficial to really prove himself, settle down in Serie A, because, you know, I think he's going to be a player um, we're going to see in Europe um, dominating week in and week out, like you said, with all of his ability. You know, he'll pick up the defensive game pretty quickly, especially, you know, at a high level of Serie A. But I think he has all the other tangibles to really succeed there. Yeah, yeah, and you really said it. Athletically, he's he's really, really gifted, um, and, and he's going to be a great attacking fullback. He had four assists in MLS this season, uh, in, in very limited minutes until really the end of the season or, or at least the second part of the season. So, yeah, I think either one of those teams, uh, like we would just talked about, uh, it's a slam dunk, I think, for both sides. So, Pat, do you want to move on to our next player on the list? Yeah, that's right. Next player we're excited about is uh, Gianluca Busio. So the 18-year-old, uh, you know, sporting Kansas City uh, midfielder there um, has played a lot of positions here. But we'll kind of start with this 2020 recap. Um, made a really big jump from, you know, 2019, being that um, kind of, you could say, even a bit player, you know, substituting, having a little bit of impact to, um, you know, really just you know, taking control and into the starting lineup here for 2020, um, you know, and helping kind of that that old guard transition out of Sporting KC and the new, you know, some of those uh, like Jalen Lindsay and a few other players uh, coming in here. So again, uh, Gianluca, you know, had again, another injury spell to Sanchez there and was thrown uh, into it kind of a newer position there in the, in the six where he hasn't really played, um, you know, that often, but, you know, really kind of thrived and succeeded in that role. I think, uh, you know, the coach Peter Verms even compared him to a you know, Pirlo-esque, um, you know, how he was playing and adapting that style. Obviously a big comparison there, but I think you get the point there where he is, you know, really calm on the ball um, with his vision, you know, kind of has that technical ability and skill, um, you know, to weave in and out of the box and was, you know, picking up pretty quickly how to be in the right, you know, pockets of space or, you know, at least obstruct the, you know, counters or, uh, you know, opposing teams offense going forward. So it's nice to see him adapt there and, you know, play with all that, you know, confidence and passion at, you know, such a young age. So I believe, I um, mean, he started 15 to 21 games there, um, you know, with, you know, obviously this COVID schedule mess everything up, but also it's nice to see him, um, you know, really just kind of dominate and get, you know, credit from other teams too. I think uh, you know, Minnesota, a few other teams that he played were, were pretty impressed with him. Um, you know, in terms of his technical ability and, and being that young uh, name that we've talked about for a while, it feels like at this point. But yeah, again, just kind of, uh, you know, shifting a little bit here to, you know, some of the rumors. Um, and it's really been Barcelona, Austin. has kind of come in here late um, and, and has expressed some interest in monitoring Buzio. So nothing's materialized, but, you know, that would almost make it the third American, I believe. That would make it the third American, um, you know, obviously with, with Conrad there and, and Dest. Um, you know, potentially joining there. Um, that'd be a dream come true if he could, you know, make it at Barcelona. But again, um, you know, he's even been linked in the past. Austin, you know, Serie A, uh, you know, thrown around there. I think Fiorentina, even Bayern Munich, um, you know, some rumors there. But it seems like Buzio is very much content, uh, you know, where he is at, at Sporting KC. He definitely has aspirations to move to Europe, but I think it's more of a decision, you know, with his family, um, you know, how Sporting KC has treated him. Um, you know, going up to you know, the academy and really developing him as a player, the relationship with the coaches, um, you know, everything there. I think it really means a lot to him. So, um, you know, I'd be interested to kind of see when that time frame is. Yeah, and you hit the nail right on the head, Pat. He's such a young player still. He's only 18 years old. So he's still got time to, to grow in MLS and, and really come into his own maybe in this third season or this, you know, this third full season and uh, yeah, maybe by the end of the season, we see him make a move to, to one of those big teams. But it definitely sounds like, you know, teams are taking interest in him and he's got a lot of eyes on him in Europe, which is which is really cool. That's all we can can ask for uh, for a young player. So to move on, we want to go to George Bello now. So George Bello is an 18 year old left back for Atlanta United. And he was someone who really was the, the gem of his age group growing up, um, really the star prospect for for his youth teams, you know, there were some teams such as Chelsea being linked with him, uh, linked with a move for him early on in his career. And, uh, you know, some of that hype has cooled off a little bit. But this past year for Atlanta United, they didn't have the best season. But George Bell was really kind of one of their bright spots uh, on the year. And he really locked down that, that left back position by the end of the year. I think he ended up playing around 1,500 minutes for them in all competitions and had a really great assist, you know, just a few weeks ago in the uh, 
in the CONCACAF Champions League, you know, Pat, the little brother yeah. <laughs> of the UEFA Champions League. But nonetheless, it was a great assist, nice cross into the box, and really shows off kind of the, the technique that George Bello has um, and, and, and some of that skill. You know, he really has grown from the player we saw at 16 years old when he, you know, burst onto the scene, uh, onto, you know, the professional scene, I should say, for Atlanta United in that really good season for them. Um, and he's really just come come so far, I would say. You know, he's really rounded out that that technical ability. He's gotten a lot better uh, picking his moments of when to go forward and when to, you know, stay back and, and read the game better defensively. So, so that's something that uh, I was really impressed to see this year from him. And I really just like how his mentality has changed too. I think the big knock on him growing up, uh, especially early on at Atlanta United, was that he uh, maybe wasn't truly uh, invested in the team. You know, there were some some issues with some of their their youth players at Atlanta United with the Carlton thing, immaturity. Yeah, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but um, that's something that you've really seen George this season dedicate himself to being the starting left back there at Atlanta United. And uh, it paid off. He, he, he is the starting left back now and is in a really good spot. So just like John Luca Busio, he's 18 years old, has a lot of time still to, to, you know, grow his career more in MLS. I think he's another one that might have to wait till the end of this season to really make a, a big move. But honestly, I see this season going similar to the way Brian Reynolds season went. Um, and I, I think that's him just breaking onto the scene, being one of the best outside backs in the league. And, and taking that next step and getting some some big level interest. You know, you saw what happened with Brian Reynolds. He's got, you, get, you know, again, Juve and, and Roma fighting over his uh, his services. So I think, you know, if he has the similar type of season and, and, and takes that next step, you could see some bigger teams come in for George Bello. Yeah, and it's a player we've been talking about, you know, Pretty, for a long time, it feels like Austin. And, and I think, you know, elements that you mentioned are very important. Um, you know, the maturity side, you know, young player, especially with all the hype, um, you know, even just a few years back, even even younger, obviously. Um, but to be able to kind of hone that in and work on his craft and, and really, like you mentioned, pick and choose when to go forward and, and you know, master those skills defensively and improve in a really competitive MLS league. Um, you know, it's really grown in the last few years. So it's nice to see him really elevate those parts of his game. And I think if he continues to do that, especially taking an even bigger step over to Europe um, with some of those teams and, and the rumors there, um, I think, you know, the sky's the limit for George. Um, you know, it seems like the outside backs for the, the U S national team, um, you know, especially left back would be, you know, fantastic, but it looks like we're you know developing a lot of talent there and George can be another one in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you put it best there. I can't really, can't really add anything else to it. If, if he can, you know, really challenge Anthony Robinson for that left back spot. And even Serginio Dest, if he plays on the left, Sam Vines is another player at that position. Then I think, yeah, he's, he's going to be a big asset going forward for the, uh, for the men's national team. Absolutely. And so uh, another player I want to you know, shift to still staying defensive side here, but uh, Mark McKenzie, Austin, um, you know, my, my Philadelphia union, you know, my first, uh, you know, team I supported there over in the MLS, but uh, trophy winners. that's right. Trophy winners. Finally. Awesome. So the 21 year old, uh, you know, homegrown prospect there, um, you know, just spent a year at wake forest in 2018, but has really made some waves, um, you know, with the union, finally helping them pick up that supporters shield, um, you know, still again, don't want to harp too much on the playoffs. You know, that was unfortunate to go out that way, but it's really nice to see them get a trophy and, and really just dominate, you know, throughout the regular season there. So McKenzie has really just, proven himself and, and elevated his game to be that that lock star, that really reliable um, center back who has added some really interesting elements to his game, Austin. There's a few games where he's had multi, you know, two assists, I think, um, where he's able to thread the ball like a needle through the, the midfielders and the, the crowded areas. Um, you know, something that, you know, we've seen maybe John Bricks, Brooks, excuse me, do with the national team, um, you know, and, and some others have some, some difficulties with that. So really interesting you know, great skill to add to his abilities, especially, you know, I, you know, going forward, if he's looking at a move to Europe there, a potential, um, we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. But yeah, again, some of his, you know, his strength, athleticism, um, you know, how, how he sees the field and, you know, calm with the ball. Still has to improve a little bit on the defensive side. Again, a young player. I'm kind of like Bellow, you know, still, um, you know, when, when counters or, you know, certain situations happen and that'll improve with ex game experience, but he has all the tangibles, you know, the physical traits and skills and just, you know, being very, you know, intellectual and, and you can see almost inquisitive Austin. Uh, some of the interviews he's mentioned, 
um, you know, looking at his play and, and really, you know, watching film or analyzing himself and where he sees himself, you know, going in his career, um, you know, what leagues, what clubs he's drilling down to specific players, you know, he wants to aspire to be. So that's really great to see, um, you know, somebody that, you know, has captained the U.S., you know, back in, was it 2019 at the, the U-20 World Cup there, um, you know, even with the, an appearance of the senior team. So I think that's the leader, you know, um, you know, born to you know, be a strong center back, Austin, for us here. So I want to kind of shift gears to some of the rumors we're talking about. And, uh, you know, we've a fan favorite, you could say, some of our Scottish Yankees um, have been there with Celtic. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Celtic would be kind of an interesting place to go, a very strong team, the caliber, the reputation they have. Um, even Genk in Belgium, um, I think they're in second place right now, um, which is pretty impressive. And they've, they've done a lot in the last few years. Um, so, again, a pretty competitive league. And then even, I think, Union Berlin's been mentioned, Bundesliga and EPL. Um, so there's a wide variety of interest for Mark here. And uh, I think that's one player that we could see leave, um, you know, fairly soon here. Yeah. And like you said, he, he has studied a lot of film. He, he's got several idols. And one of those idols is Virgil van Dijk. And Virgil van Dijk, as you all know, uh, went to Celtic, uh, then went to Southampton and now is at Liverpool. And I really think, you know, following that trajectory, obviously it would be great if it paid off that well for, for Mark McKenzie, but I think going to Celtic, even though it's a lesser league, some would say you'd be playing week in and week out against people maybe better or worse than MLS. I don't think the competition would be that much higher, but you're going to get that that great foot in the door into Europe, get with a good club, like you said, Pat, that has good reputation and grow that European resume and hopefully win a trophy or two at it too. So I, I think that would be a great move for him. I, I, I'm a lot higher on that move than I feel like a lot of other people are. And uh, yeah, I feel like it could be a great launching pad for a team like Southampton in the Premier League, which I think Mark McKenzie going to Southampton in the future would be a great move uh, in my mind. So yeah, I'm really excited about him, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, Austin. I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, You know, again, don't want to make the direct Virgil van Dijk comparison, but again, certainly (laughs) a model to aspire to, um, you know, see where he's come and, you know, Celtic Southampton and then my team Liverpool. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, Mark's got a lot of options there and and I think he would just really, you know, thrive on a a top tier team that's winning trophies and, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, not so much a, a scenario where you're, you know, not to compare to a Schalke, but, you know, someone on the bottom, you know, league of a table, I think you need to be at a, you know, a, a mid-level European, um, you know, league that's kind of maybe the top three or four that, you know, has some of that position where you can, you know, really get involved with the, the attack and thread those needles and those passes and, you know, pick up more assists. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be great. So to go to a final player for today, that would be Daryl DK. So obviously if you haven't paid attention to MLS this year, uh, Daryl DK is, is one worth paying attention to. And uh, he's basically a 20, uh, 20 year old striker for Orlando City. Looks like a football player, honestly. Uh, one of the biggest big guys guy. on the pitch. Uh, 6'3, 225. So, yeah, this is a big dude we're talking about. But the, the cool thing with Daryl is he's not just a big presence on the field, he also has some great touch. Uh, his first touch this year I thought was fantastic. Uh, you know, he's a player that liked to get on the counter um, and really just take that first touch around players or, or just, you know, go forward with that first touch. It wasn't, he, he's not very cautious with it, which was something I really liked. And uh, yeah, just his close control too. I, you know, really impressed me. And uh, you know, he was someone who was drafted out of college by Orlando city this year from Virginia. And uh, I believe he was fifth, fifth drafted right. in, the, in the MLS super draft. And uh, really just, you know, took that starting striker position for Orlando City and made it his own uh, and, and played a little over 1,400 minutes, scored eight goals and had three assists and, and really just was a star player for a team that did really well this year. A team that had Nani, Chris Mueller, several other midfielders and defenders who really carried that team and uh, had a pretty interesting run in the MLS playoffs. You know, you had that game where an outfield oh, yeah. player had to come in the to goal for the penalty shootout uh, that they ended up winning. And uh, yeah, so so good season from Daryl DK. Again, still only 20 years old, and that's after playing a season in college. So I think this was a great first season for him. He showed all the qualities that a star striker, um, you know, not just in MLS, but a striker in Europe, uh, you know, with a career in Europe has. Uh, he showed that this year in MLS. So 
you know, Pat, maybe you want to talk about some teams that have been rumored with him. Yeah, Austin. Um, you know, Daryl certainly has, you know, a lot of other, you know, um, you know, qualities that you mentioned in, in teams in the radar there. Um, you know, I certainly think some of those other clubs in Europe, um, you know, they're rumored that you go to a Belgium Giants uh, Club Bruges, um, where Horvath is, um, you know, kind of unfortunate there. Another situation we'll get into. But again, uh, I think DK could really, you know, shine a uh, team that's done historically well in the league, you know, top two or three, winning some trophies there, getting the Champions League, getting some great exposure. Again, a, a nice launching pad there. I think it'd be very interested to see. Um, like you mentioned, he, he's he's a big guy, but he has the, ath the athleticism, the technical ability, even some of the defensive work rate, um, which is kind of interesting to see. So, again, somebody that Austin you don't want to touch on too much, but, you know, wasn't expected to, you know, really shine or play all that much. And then, you know, with Dom Dwyer coming out, he really – you know, seized his chance and opportunities and, and made an impression, you know, during camp there. And that this kind of crazy, uh, you know, start and stop MLS season with, with COVID and, and took, you know, advantage of the moment. And now is, you know, one of the, you know, I think really few strikers we should be looking out for, for the senior team. Yeah. Yeah. And I think him and Josh Sargent honestly have the highest ceilings at that striker position. You know, Daryl DK really has all the the, the attributes to be a complete striker. And I think Josh Sargent's really starting to come into his own too. Obviously he needs to score the ball a little bit more, but we've seen all the other attributes that he has uh, that hold up play, you know, the good passing and, and vision up front, being a facilitator. Um, you know, if he can only add that, that scoring, then I think he's going to be another complete striker and will give us two really good options up front for years to come. So I'm really excited about Daryl. I know Pat, you are too. Uh, but he really strikes me as a player that, you know, maybe he'll go to Club Bruges, you know, in the near future. But I see him one day play, playing in the Premier League, honestly. You know, his play style, like his aggressiveness, uh, you know, that big body of his would be perfect on a on a cold pitch. Maybe if Stoke City's in the Premier League, uh, on Stoke, on a, on a rainy night. I like uh, it. I, I like think, it. Uh, yeah, I think Daryl DK is uh, one day destined for, for a move to England. But we'll have to wait and see. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all for our, for our video today, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And for other, you know, great content, Instagram and Twitter, um, you know, some other, you know, players here, you know, how they're doing weekly as well as just, you know, um, you know, taking you through some some great throwbacks. And Austin had one, uh, you know, pass on Instagram with, with uh, you know, Howard and some of the other guys. So through the years, uh, you don't want to miss that and check that out for daily content. That's right. We also do a weekly show or a weekly report on players. And we're, we're torn with the idea of maybe doing that Justin podcast form and, and doing some videos like this more weekly. Um, so definitely leave a comment on that. See, you know, let us know if you like this style of video and if you want to see more of these and, and you know, give us some suggestions too. But uh, if you want to find our podcast, uh, go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. The link's down below. And uh, yeah, Pat, what a... Uh, yeah, what an exciting time. we got big teams coming in for MLS players. Got a lot of players already playing abroad. Can't be, uh, can't be much better than that. Yeah, it couldn't be much better to kind of, you know, say goodbye to 2020, hello to 2021. I think it's going to be great for, you know, the world and uh, the, the U.S. Uh, you know, national team here and some of the prospects coming up because, uh, you know, all these players, like you mentioned, Austin, you know, doing very well in MLS, some making the move. A lot of speculation. Um, we had McKenney, Pulisic, Adams, uh, you know, Rain, all these guys kind of leading the way and paving the path um, to, I think, one final goal there. That's right. And that would be one day winning the World Cup.